This man, Justin Houston, I did not realize how crazy he was until this press. I, I didn't know. But at the same time, I can't complain about his craziness because it's obviously worked. We are officially off of the bye week. I know uh, Tuesday officially stopped, but no, today, since we finally got a Ravens presser with players, that, then we officially off of the bye week. Ravens football is back. We back to normal. Team, keep it clean. I love y'all, and I hope y'all are doing really good. But Justin Houston, this guy is a menace. He said that he does. That, like this offseason and this season, he said that he's been doing three a days, at least five days a three. I ain't even heard of three a days before. I don't even do one a days five days a week. But he does three a days for at least five days a week. And I'm like, what? And he says sometimes he even does a six day too. Ooh, that boy Justin Houston, he, he, he make you rethink your life, man. He will make you rethink your life. Um, and but but we've been seeing the results. We've been seeing the results from him. Uh, he talked about in his presser how after last season ended, said he was thinking about calling it quits. Uh, but he said him and his wife they took a trip to Mexico. <laughs> Good choice, I like that. Oh, uh, well, they took a trip to Mexico. Uh, he turned the phone off and he said he was telling her like. I still feel good, um, but I'm not getting the numbers that I want to get. I respect that. And it's like, hey, you you want to produce. You, you may feel good. You may look good sometimes. But if you're not producing, you just may not feel like you're giving everything that you can possibly give. Um, but he said he thought about it. He said he did a lot of praying and whatnot. So I was like, all right, cool. And then he said, all right, well, you know what? She she told him. This, this is why our wives ladies that they are very important because they help so much in all of our big decisions small decisions and everything in between he said his wife told him nah you mm -mm, not yet it ain't time for you to retire yet um but so he came back he came back uh, and he has been <laughs> huge uh, for the Baltimore Ravens but he has also been a great example Marlon Humphrey mentioned it in his part of the presser uh, he talked about how Justin Houston is always in different guys ears and whatnot encouraging him and whatnot uh, especially Adafi away but he said Justin Houston he said you need uh, veterans on a team like that because what they bring um, is that they, they, they are they talking about it but they also got the action to back it up because there's some people where they could talk about it and they could be all motivated and all this and all that. They, they could talk a good game, but they don't play a good one. And that can apply to so many different areas and phases of life. But with football, for example, it'd be one thing if you got this player that's a great talker, great motivator. But if he's on the field and he's terrible, then are you really going to believe what he's saying? But with Justin Houston, it obviously hasn't been like that. Uh, they obviously they call him Yoda. We learned that last year when he came aboard. Um, but he he has certainly been such a big part of this team. He also talked about uh, how his son, his son motivates him uh, and his son will call him out. And yeah, I know from experience like your your kids, they they will call you out. They certainly will. Um, but he said his son called him out. And as his son be getting on him, staying on him. Uh, but he said it helps. And, but but he also talked about how he just has so much joy. And, and he said, this is what it's about. Uh, when he got, was it the pick or one of the sacks? I think it was the pick. But whichever ball it was, whether it's one of his two and a half sacks or the interception, when he got the ball, I think it had to be the interception because you don't keep a sack ball. But anyway, he got the interception and went over and handed it to his son. And and those are special moments like that, just just seeing your kids happy. That's when it's like, oh, yeah, this, okay, this this was all worth it. So shout out to uh, Justin Houston. Um, Marlon Humphrey, uh, he spoke today as well. Um, and he talked about, uh, my favorite part about Marlon Humphrey's part of the presser was when they asked him about him playing outside versus him playing inside uh, at corner. Um, and he said uh, when he plays inside, he said he does a lot less thinking. Now, he talked about that could be a good thing or it could be a bad thing. But he said he does a lot less thinking. Um, but he said he gets to get in his sort of uh, his little linebacker stance and he'll be lined up next to PQ or next to, to Roquan Smith. Um, but he gets to be a lot more physical. And he said he, he, he loves being able to be 
a lot more uh, physical. And we know physicality is a big part of Marlon Humphrey's game. He is a man corner. And we know sometimes I get a little too physical. Sometimes Marlon Humphrey get the, little, the, the holding calls and whatnot. You know, Marlon like grabbing sometimes. Um, but he... Uh, Illegal contact, not so much, but he'll, he'll get the little the, them holding calls every now and then. But um, that is a big part of his game, uh, being able to press uh, the receivers at the line of scrimmage. Uh, Marlon Humphrey also talked about um, he talked about when they first got Roquan Smith. He said that a lot of his teammates they they didn't believe him. They they thought that he was lying. Um, but it obviously ended up being true. Uh, he spoke about Kyle Hamilton. Um, he said that before the draft. Uh, it, Kyle Hamilton was brought up And he thought that Kyle Hamilton was a very interesting player That he could play in so many different positions uh, That he was sort of positionless um, That he could do so many different things And he said he felt like the Ravens They weren't going to be able to get him uh, But they were able to get him uh, And he's glad And he said that they they really been um, Really finding a role uh, Over these past couple of weeks and whatnot And Kyle Hamilton's been looking Better and better as we have seen uh, Cause early on, it just it seemed like the Ravens were like, was it by strategy or was it just by he they weren't confident in him or was it that he just he was a little bit lost out there? I don't know, and maybe we never will. But early on this season, it seemed like the Ravens just they didn't know exactly how to use Kyle Hamilton. They didn't know exactly uh, what to do with him. Um, but like I said, it could have been a number of things and a number of reasons. But now it's He's been being put in more positions uh, for him to have success. So that's been a, a, a really good thing. Um, he talked about PQ. Uh, said that Patrick Queen is uh, just the, the speed that he plays with. Said he feels like he's one of the best uh, linebackers in the league. Uh, and he talked about the addition of Roquan Smith, how, how that, that has helped uh, Patrick Queen as well and really helped the whole defense. And he talked about the whole defense too, about that they um, – he said he feels like they are they are reaching their sort of elite status. Um, they still he said in the Saints game that was probably uh, one of their best games. But then at the same time he did say except for that that one that one bad drive with that play, and we all know the play that he was talking about. He's talking about the Marcus Peters Chuck Clark, and um, you know what you know what's so crazy? I don't even remember what Saints player it was. I want to say it was a tight end, but I don't even remember what Saints player it was that scored that touchdown where where nobody wanted to to, to push him out. Um, but yeah, Marlon Humphrey's talking about how they, uh, the defense is just coming together and they really are, um, with Patrick Queen and Roquan Smith, especially hearing Marlon Humphrey talk about it. It reminded me of him because he talked about, uh, how they already had Patrick Queen, um, and they went and added Roquan Smith, um, who's obviously an established guy. Uh, he's still on his rookie contract too, though. But anyway, uh, it reminded me of him and Marcus Peters, how they already had Marlon Humphrey, um, and he, who, he was coming along, uh, doing his thing, but then they went and added Marcus Peters and that just, uh, that helped a lot, not just Marlon Humphrey, but it helped the entire defense that much more, uh, real quick, going back to, uh, Justin Houston, um, they talked about him, how he's been feeling this season. He said, he's been feeling great. And it's nice that, um, that they have a nice rotation. They got a nice rotation. They got, they got different guys that could come in and whatnot. And it's true. They certainly do, and now they're about to get somebody else with uh, David Ajabo. So we'll see uh, how he does. Now, um, Lamar Jackson, he was also uh, at this press. He also spoke. Um, they asked him, Jameson Hensley, today he was like, look, I'm, about to, I'm getting this question off to everybody because he asked Harbaugh, he asked Lamar, he asked Marlon Humphrey. He was like, um, he, he asked, uh, oh, with – with going against Baker Mayfield and these these quarterbacks who were drafted ahead of Lamar, uh, th does that give him any extra motivation? And Harbaugh was like, ah, that's a better question for Lamar. Lamar was like, ah, no, I don't get any extra motivation. I'm motivated every game. And he said that plenty of times before. And then Marlon Humphrey was like, ah, no, nah, I don't think that gives him any extra motivation. He said Lamar's a really basic guy. Uh, he's already motivated. But shout out to Jameis because Jameis said, I'm getting this question off. Y'all going to hear this question. Um, but anyway, uh, Rita asked about Baker Mayfield being intimidated by Lamar Jackson's mom. And Lamar said he ain't even realized that. Uh, and, and I did see the clip. Shout out to Jonas uh, Schaefer. He, he put the clip up where Baker was talking about how Lamar's mom 
uh, to, before the draft, told Baker Mayfield, hey, you need to get your behind down here in Florida and train. And Baker said that uh, he, he had a few drinks, and the, those drinks, so they helped – they helped Baker Mayfield tell Lamar Jackson's mom, uh, no. Um, but I, whatever the story is behind that, who knows? But he said that with Lamar Jackson's mom, he said uh, he he can see why Lamar Jackson is so tough. You know, his his mom don't play. So so shout out to her. Um, they uh they also asked him, um, do you wish that the bye week? They asked this to Lamar Jackson. Uh, do you wish the bye week didn't ar didn't arrive with how the offense was playing? So how, how things were starting to seem like they were clicking a bit more, and, and things were really getting getting going, and offense and defense. But he said it, it came at a perfect time. He said the guys got to rest their bodies, and I mean, <laughs> I, I wouldn't expect him to really say anything else. And that's whether the bye week was earlier, whether it's later. Um, but this bye week for the Ravens, like it actually did come at a really good time. Mark Andrews, with whatever he got going on, uh, he did practice today, which was great. Uh, they said that the, the the media portion he didn't practice, but later on he did practice, so that was good. Um, but, uh, again, you're not sleeping on the Panthers at all. But at the same time, if he's going to miss another game, okay, let him rest. Don't rush him. Don't force him. You got a lot of season left. And then, of course, you, you want to have the postseason left too. Don't rush him. You just got Charlie Kolar back. Uh, so we'll, we'll see, but you ain't got to rush him. You still got Josh Oliver. You still got Nick Boyle. So yeah. And of course, Isaiah likely. So yeah, you don't, you don't rush. Um, so yeah, we'll see how that goes. Uh, and then Gus Edwards, he was at practice today too. So that, that was nice to hear. Uh, uh John Harbaugh spoke cause he was, he had his presser too. He was the first one. Um, and he said that, uh, he said, we'll see with, uh, with, with a job and Cola, if, if they prag, I mean, excuse me, if they play this week, he, he said, we'll see. I think if they do play, I think they'll play a job this week. I think he'll play a couple of snaps, but I think they will, uh, have Jason Pierre Paul inactive. I think they'll have a job over him, but Hey, we'll see. Won't know till we know. Um, they asked uh, Lamar, you've had a lot of success versus the NFC. And Lamar cut him off. He said, whoa, 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 hold up there, buddy. He said that I, I don't even like questions like that. Uh, and he said that he just goes out there, whether it's NFC, AFC, or even a Canadian team, and just goes out there and tries to win. Simple as that. Um, they also asked uh, if the Ravens feel like they're trendsetters. Somebody asked Lamar if the Ravens feel like they're trendsetters uh, when it comes to the run game. And Lamar did say, well, it is a copycat league and whatnot because uh, somebody who, I think, was it Jameson Hensley? Well, whoever brought up that question, they talked about how Justin Fields said that the Bears, they took a couple plays from the Ravens. Uh, but while Lamar said that the, the run game has been doing his thing, he said he still sees guys out there throwing that football around. So again, this was acknowledgement by Lamar, like, hey, <laughs> we we want to throw that ball too. But anyway, um, they asked him, I think, oh, Rita, Rita asked him, how do you continue to spread the ball around? And he said by staying locked in on film, take what the defenses give him. And he said that it's not just him. It's also the guys, like the, the pass catches and whatnot, uh, working their tails off, getting open. Uh, so he made sure he gave credit to them. Uh, and he also talked about Drake. Because Drake, uh, he was asked about Drake. He said it's been good, but it could be better. And he said they all have to stay focused and locked in. And that takes me back to Justin Houston, too. Justin Houston said, while the Ravens have been winning, which is great, and I, and I appreciated him acknowledging this, um, he said, while the, the Ravens have been winning, which is great, he said they haven't been playing their best football. Um, they haven't been, they, they, he said they have high standards, and they have not been meeting them yet. So that's a good thing because and you never really want to settle. You know, you never want to settle. You always want to look for ways to get better, but especially in such a team sport like football. You you have to find ways to get better in different areas, especially when you're struggling somewhere. Especially if everything ain't running so smoothly because with with basketball like one dude could dribble the ball up and down the court. They go they they could take they they could they could inbound the ball, they could dribble at the half court, they could pull up, shoot a three, they could pull up to the three point line, they could shoot a three, they could drive it inside, shoot a lay or do a layup or, or dunk it, whatever, do a jump shot. They got so many options that they could do, but they don't necessarily need the team to do it. I mean, while other guys are gonna be guarding other people on the team in basketball, they don't they don't need the team to go from one end to the other. In football you do. You do. You, you, it takes so much from other people, 
for things to work. Um, and it's a lot easier for it to fall apart uh, than it is in basketball, for example. Not saying basketball is not a team sport, but football is like the ultimate uh, team sport. Um, so it's important to always look for ways to improve. But anyway, team, keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. This was a nice little welcome back presser uh, from Hobbs, from Justin Houston, from Marlon Humphrey, and from uh, Lamar Jackson. Uh, nice to hear what those fellas had to say. So uh, we'll see how the rest of the season shakes out. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And we out.